Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room, except I'm not in Tessera's Nerf Room. This is actually my studio room. Today, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite blasters. And you're probably thinking that I've already done this video. I have. I'm gonna be brutally honest with you guys. I did not expect my list to change so much over the course of just a couple months. Seriously, my original list is completely outdated by today's standards. And it mainly comes down to the fact that I've collected some blasters that I love so much that I had no idea I was going to enjoy so, so much that it completely obliterates my original top 10 best list and creates an entire new list which I am presenting now for one reason. I am kind of at a point where I am very satisfied with my collection. I have got most of the blasters that I really, really wanted to have, other than a couple hobbyist blasters that I haven't gotten my hands on yet because the dollar signs are really, really up, but that's future me's problem to figure out because right now I'm taking a break from buying blasters. I just spent $300 on a very expensive project, which is actually sitting in the corner over there, and I will get to a video on that as soon as I possibly can. But at the state that I am right now, I'm done collecting blasters, I'm satisfied with my collection, and I think that it's a good time to update my top 10 best list. I hope you like the end strike wall behind me. I think it looks so good. <laughs> only one rule for this video which is exactly the same as my last video and that is that mods do not get a higher ranking than regular stock blasters and that is for the simple reason that modified blasters can't be compared to stock blasters. They're full of locks, they've got air restrictors in them, they've got thermistors if it's a flywheel blaster. It is not fair to compare something modified to something stock because when you modify a blaster you take all that crap out to make it perfect. So you understand where I'm coming from I hope. Now, before we get onto the list, I want to bring up three honorable mentions. The first being the N-Strike Barrel Break. This blaster is so cool for all of the reasons that do not make it usable in a Nerf War. It's got break action. It looks like a flintlock. You front load two darts in, you do it like this. It shoots both at the same time in one trigger pull. It looks freaking awesome, and the performance leaves much to be desired. This blaster has reverse plungers and really, really tight compact reverse plungers at that, so good luck modifying it without doing a complete overhaul. This blaster's performance is its biggest drawback. If the blaster performed better, or was at least able to be modified to perform better without too much trouble, then this thing probably would have made the list because it's genuinely one of the coolest blasters that I have. But mainly because of the performance, I can't justify taking this to any Nerf Wars, and just running around plinking with it kind of gets boring after a little while, because, yeah, the gimmick of doing this doesn't last forever. Next, we have the Rough Cut for very similar reasons. This blaster almost did make the list, and it is genuinely one of my favorite blasters ever made, but honestly, just these other 10 blasters I've gotten more enjoyment out of than the Rough Cut. Even though the Rough Cut is basically perfect in every regard, other than the fact that it's a smart AR mechanism rather than just like a direct breach mechanism, it is seriously a cool blaster, and it almost, almost made the list. And finally, we have the Strife. I don't have any stock strifes right now, but this blaster was very close to making the number 10 spot other than the fact that I realized that it's only really good when you modify it. In its stock form, the strife is really boring and it's got a lot of annoying locks in it and it's just not that fun to play around with. Yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah, it's good looking. Yeah, it works. But there are so many better blasters out there until you modify it. Granted, when you do modify it, is it an absolute monstrosity? Yes. But before you modify it, there's just not much to talk about here. So at the number 10 spot, we have this, the Zombie Strike Sledgefire. This is a blaster that I have wanted for actual years, decades now, and when I finally got it, it was actually even more fun than I originally thought. This blaster is so cool for basically every single reason you can think of. It's comfortable, it's good looking, it's nicely proportioned. The mechanism of brake action, shell ejecting, front loading shotgun that shoots three darts at once works way too seamlessly to not give credit for, plus it auto ejects the shell, allowing you to easily switch the shells out, and it takes only a couple minutes to get super easily used to the mechanism and be able to go incredibly fast with it. It is so good. I love this blaster so, so much that it honestly almost made it further down the list if it weren't for these other blasters I'm about to bring up. 
at the number 9 spot is the N-Strike Titan ASV-1. This thing is stupid. This thing is so stupid that I have to give it credit for being the stupidest blaster I've ever seen in my entire life. It is genuinely the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> that is so much fun every single time. It is so very broken. It barely made it across my studio room and my studio room is not very big. Yeah. The blaster is lacking in the performance department, and you can't really modify it to be very good, but even in its stock form, the Titan is just so dumb, so fun, so ludicrous. It had to make the list. It is just downright ridiculous in every single way. At number 8 is actually a tie between the Elite 2.0 Double Punch and the Elite 2.0 Moto Blitz. Both of these blasters are very, very cool for completely different reasons. Neither of them appeal to everybody, specifically Phase 1 Bolton. But this blaster has a Korda kind of binary trigger system. You put in two magazines, and then it's a semi-automatic blaster. You pull the trigger down, it shoots one dart, and then when you release the trigger, it shoots another one. A super interesting and well-refined mechanism that I love. Meanwhile, the Moto Blitz is basically a raven that you can do this with. Yeah, six darts, air tank shotgun right on the front. That is super easy to get shooting incredibly hard. This blaster I would probably pick over the double punch, but then again, the double punch is so good that I'm honestly conflicted about which one I like more. Hence why they both made the number eight spot. At number seven, we have the Vortex Proton. This is, at the moment, my favorite Vortex Blaster, though it is very close between this and the Vigilon. I like this one a bit more than the Vigilon exclusively because of the way that it reloads. You pull this thing back, and then you have a rear-loading P90-style breach that allows you to load a single disc in, and then it is a Vortex Jolt that is super good looking, super comfortable, super easy to use, a nearly flawless, super well designed, easy to fix mechanism on the inside. That is one of the few Vortex Blasters that I would actually want to modify. The Proton is freaking amazing. I love this blaster a whole heck of a lot more than I was expecting to when I first saw this thing at the thrift store. I love it so much that I bought a second one. The number six spot is actually right behind me. It is the Stampede. I cannot get enough out of this blaster. I genuinely like playing with this thing more than I like playing with the Rapid Strike. The Stampede is good in every single way. It's comfortable, it's usable, it's fun, it's loud, it makes a lot of noise when you fire it, and it is just a super pleasant, super nice experience. Listen to this thing. It's slow, but it is just so good and so cool, especially for when it came out. This blaster is 14 years old, and it is still holding up to this day in every department, except for the performance. Yeah, the performance is the only thing that this thing doesn't have going for it at the moment, but luckily, you can modify it. And when you do modify it, you can get it shooting really, really hard. At number five is the Raven. This one in particular, I love a whole heck of a lot more than any other regular Raven, but I'm going to leave my biases aside. Even then, this blaster is so cool. It is a teeny, teeny, tiny Strife, and it looks bigger than the Strife because it is bigger than the Strife, but the thing is all the internals are in the stock. So when you actually hold it like this. Look at how tiny this blaster is. It is so small and so usable that you can basically use it for any situation at all. It is comfortable, it's good looking, the performance is good, it's mag fed, it's a bullpup, and it just works seamlessly. I love the Raven so much. This is one of the few blasters that I actually did take to Hanu and used competitively, and it was honestly my favorite blaster to use outside of Tesseract. Number four is also sitting on the wall behind me. It is the Mag Strike. This blaster, again, super cool, super fun, but unlike most of the other end strike blasters I've taken a look at, this thing does have the performance going for it as well. It shoots hard, and it actually outperforms some elite blasters and elite 2.0 blasters on the market right now. This is an air tank blaster that you use like this, you pump it about 29 times, and then you just hold down the trigger and it obliterates whoever's in front of you by launching 10 darts in less than a single second. I love this blaster so much that I actually take it off the wall randomly and just shoot off a single clip 
and then load it back up and shoot off another clip just because it's so fun and satisfying to do, especially when I'm mad. This thing relieves stress like it's nobody's business. I love the mag strike way too much, and this thing will be going to competitions with me because, come on, it's a mag strike. It's so cool. At number three is the Worker Phoenix 2.0. I love this thing way too much. I love this blaster unconditionally much. This thing is so cool. It doesn't take that long to figure out how to use. Getting the battery in is kind of annoying, and then getting the battery out is annoying. But after that, you've got an angled talon mag woozy and a half that you can just use. It is fast, comfortable, good looking, easy to use, just amazing. This blaster's biggest drawback is the fact that it is so good. And I actually mean that. This blaster shoots so violently that it completely destroys any dart that you put through it within just like 10 to 20 mags through. You will only be able to get a dart through this about 10 to 20 times before it just gets shredded into dust because it can't withstand the unspeakable powers of the freaking Phoenix 2.0. I love this blaster so much that I could gush about how good it is all day long. Number two was a very hard pick for me because honestly, if it wasn't for the number one spot being such a personal blaster, this thing would be number one. I'm talking about the Modulus Demolisher. I had no idea how amazing this thing was until I actually got my hands on it. I knew it was good. I did not know it was this good. This blaster is good at absolutely everything. It is good looking, super comfortable, super effective, very easy to use as a strife. It's not too big as a strife. Mag fed, lovely triggers, lovely, lovely triggers. Very easy to use magazine, and just for the love of it, it's got a demolisher rocket launcher on the front that punches unapologetically hard. A video for this blaster specifically is in the making right now and will probably be up in just a couple days. But honestly, right now, all you guys need to know is that I love the demolisher. I love the demolisher so much that it honestly could be my number one favorite blaster for a very long time, maybe even forever if it wasn't for the actual number one. At number one, you don't need me to tell you what it is. You could probably already guess. It's the strong arm. This blaster is perfect in every way. This is the only blaster that I have that I genuinely am going to say is perfect. It looks good. It is super comfortable. The trigger is super snappy. It's got a pop out cylinder that holds six starts. The pump is super buttery smooth. It fires hard and consistently. It's got slam fire and it's got the little notch on it so that if you dual wield them, you can pump them like this and then shoot both at the same time. Hence why I have two. I love this blaster so, so much that I don't think there's any blaster that I'm ever going to hold more dearly and close to my heart than this one. Even the Maverick. I mean, the Maverick would theoretically be second place because I love the Maverick just as much as I love the strong arm. It was a choice between these two, and I will always pick a strong arm over a Maverick because this blaster holds so many good memories that the Maverick just never got the experience of that I just love the strong arm. The strong arm is my favorite blaster and it always will be. So with that said, I'm probably not gonna make another updated list for a very long time. Maybe I will update the list at the end of the year or at the beginning of next year, I'm not sure. With all that said, leave your list in the comments. I'd love to see what your favorite blasters are. Thanks for watching, bye.